All right, we're good to go. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Muhammad Wali um, with us today um, to give us an introduction to TensorFlow. Uh, a little bit about Muhammad. I'm going to read his uh, LinkedIn bio. Um, he's on a mission to empower individuals and companies with AI. He fell in love with machine learning and deep learning about three years ago. And as a result, he spends a lot of his time empowering companies with AI and sharing their knowledge, or sharing his knowledge as part of uh, uh, the volunteering communities uh, where he lives in GDG Manama. And um, he also helps uh, expand his reach with other people through the Google Developer Group in Manama. And for the past years, he's able to train over 1,500 developers in machine learning and deep learning with the help of TensorFlow. So that's an amazing introduction, and I think everyone would enjoy to hear a bit more about him today. And without saying further, Mohammed, uh, the floor is all yours. Uh, you can share your screen so we can see your slide set as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Mashkura. And I uh, just want to add, uh, I'm a GDE now in machine learning, a Google Developer Expert. And uh, let's start. So how are you guys? Hope you are doing great. Uh, I really want to make this workshop interactive, so please uh, and answer in the comments. And let's have some fun. Okay, so before I start, before I start, uh, what is what is AI? Does anybody know what is AI? Artificial intelligence or machine learning or deep learning? So what is machine learning, deep learning? Did anybody hear about that before? So just to mention, if you want to answer or ask or share, please write in the chat. And um, there's a general button, uh, and you can add your answers there. Well, we'd love to hear from you, and I'll let you know, uh, Mohammed, if anybody's writing. Okay, great. There, uh, you have Musa asking for an explanation. <laughs> yes, I will answer that question. Don't worry. <laughs> Definitely. I just want to hear what's on your mind, Yani. Yeah. Okay, so start its program to recognize pattern. Yes, making computer learn by themselves. Yes, to some extent. That's uh, exactly what he said. It's making computer learn by itself without a human. So we want to give them some books. No, we don't want to give them books. We want to give them data and let them learn from these uh, data and that's why we call it machine learning machine learning uh, where we can find machine learning i think many of google products have machine learning um, google product or other products yeah and in instagram we have machine learning and uh, snapchat and all these different kind of platform we'll d dive in details just a second okay so why why we need machine learning it will give us three main things the first thing is is it will reduce our time to reduce time programming for example we have 1000 email let's say for example and some of these email are spam and some of other email are not spam are important email we can do two things okay we can go two ways the first way is to to uh, to learn everything in the English language and teach it to the machine by if a statement. So if this, then that, if this, then that, this is the first way to do it. If a statement, a lot of if a statement, expert systems, but now we don't have these systems uh, nowadays. But overall, we can do it in this way. 
but it will take a lot, uh, really, really, really huge uh, time for us to make all these if statements. Another way, what we can do, we can give this emails to the uh, to the machine, the best emails to the machine, and let the machine figure out the better, the better from the spam emails and the better from the important email. Then, whenever we give it a new email, it will give us what's the details inside the email, if it's spam or not spam. Uh, okay. Second thing, more customized products. Like what? Like Instagram, like Facebook, like LinkedIn, Twitter, all these social media platforms use machine learning and deep learning to give us personalized ad. To give us personalized ad, to see what we like and give us more from what we like and reduce the things that we don't like. It. Last thing, it will solve more complex problems. Like what? Like, for example, we have face recognition. And face recognition, we don't, uh, uh, we cannot يعني, uh, do an equation to filter the faces from not face. To filter faces from not face, we cannot do one equation to do it, to do that. Uh, on a, in theory, yes, we can do it, but it won't, يعني, it will take a long time to make a general equation for every person in the whole universe. So, so it's simpler to use deep learning and machine learning to do that. Okay, a few jargons. I will talk about them in, in the workshop now. First thing is label. It's the target, what we want to achieve. This is what we call it label. For example, if we, if we let the machine learn a specific face will the label for this face is face and no face for example no face this we call it label for example this image data we have it we call this the label for this image is a cat and the label for this image is a dog but the image itself it is the, our data second thing feature for example in this email, if we want to do the email spam filter, uh, we can uh, we can handle it by multiple things. For example, one thing it's the body, the body of the email, and include it in the equation. Uh, some of us will do the title, the body, the title. If it's have attachment or not, uh, who's the sender, who's the receiver, who's CC. All these things will. All these things will uh, uh, we call it features. So the body of the email, one feature. The attachment is second feature. Uh, the email title is the th third feature, and uh, and and go on. Okay, prediction. For example, in this email also, uh, we want to predict the label of this email. The label is spam, no spam but we want to predict, so we want to uh, forecast in the future what will be. We call it prediction. Okay. Uh, our features, the same as attribute. Uh, well, can you explain more about attribute, Musa? Uh, what do you mean by uh, attribute exactly? Attribute of an object. Yes, yes, it's the same, but in uh, machine learning uh, jargons, we call it feature. Okay, model, I said it uh, many times. When we said model, we mean equation. When we say model, we mean equation. For example, the model of, uh, and the best I just said filter, right? It's wrong, it's not filter. It is a model to predict the email, if it's spam or not spam. It's like an equation, exactly. Okay. 
uh, okay the full we will tell you i will you know, explain the full story what we will do exactly and how machine learning works first we will have a training phase and development phase or deployment phase two phases training phase deployment phase okay first thing in the training phase we will have our data we give it to the machine we let the machine learn by many things for example cpu gpu tpu all these processing power then we will save the model the equation and then whenever we give a uh, new data to the equation it will predict if this uh, email for example is spam or not spam okay let's say for example we'll have these two kind of data spam data and not spam data and what's these data points let's say for example we have uh, um, 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 the email itself the body of the email itself we crush it down and put it into two-dimensional uh, graph okay where the blue dots it is the spam data and the red dots it is the the non-spam data okay what is machine learning in a nutshell machine learning it is the line that distinguish the spam emails from non-spam emails as simple as that it is a line or multiple lines to distinguish between spam emails and not spam emails. Then the prediction, the new point that about it, if it's full, the line we'll call it not spam, it's full uh, above the line we'll call it spam. This is in a really nutshell. Um, Muhammad Tawfiq said, is that clustering a problem? In this case, we are not doing clustering, we are doing classification. It is a classification problem. The difference between classification and clustering is classification where we know the label and clustering where we don't know the label. In this case, we know the label, which is spam and not spam, but in clustering, we don't know uh, the label itself. That's why we do clustering. Uh, for examples, examples of clustering, Instagram behavior, it's really big and complex behavior, so we cannot, uh, we cannot label it. That's why uh, we do the clustering. Okay, sometimes we'll have a data complex like that, where we have something called outliers, okay? And there is something call overfitting what is overfitting overfitting where we do let the model uh, learn exactly what is inside the data exactly so when we want to predict a label a new label it will give us wrong prediction it will give us wrong prediction because it's overfitting uh, why it's overfitting because the label is exactly on the uh, dots the the data that we have how to prevent overfitting one of the ways to prevent overfitting we split the data into training and testing data where we have to train and test the data separately so we give it the data to train then we give it another kind of data to test I think before we move on to the hands-on part, uh, we'll use an algorithm called artificial neural network. What is the artificial neural network in a nutshell? It is an algorithm. It's the uh, it's one of the best algorithm out there. It started long time ago, but in 2012, it's outperformed all the other algorithm. When you give it a huge data, and you give it a huge processing power. Artificial neural network. Okay, what is artificial neural network in a nutshell? If we have this image, we'll find every pixel in the image, 
it is a dot here or a neuron here we call it neuron then we will predict it at the end cat or not cat how it will do that it will enter the the data it will uh, do a, a guess let's say first it will do a guessing just like zero or one uh, it will guess third thing it will learn by itself uh, by an, an, another algorithm called uh, stochastic gradient descent or optimization we'll talk about in the details when we do it and then last uh, last thing but not least it will learn by itself it will repeat all these uh, things let's me, let's go to the hands on Okay, so re, uh, do anybody have have a question? Do anybody ha have a question? So if you don't have a question, let's move on. Okay, I will send you this link. It's a link for a really cool uh, experiment by TensorFlow team and let's say we'll have these kind of data where we have x-axis and y-axis simple okay x-axis and y-axis in a simple term we said machine learning is the line to distinguish these data the blue dot from the orange dot okay but what about sometime we get more complex data? Can we do it in one line? No, that's impossible to do it in one line. So we need to add some neurons. The neurons, it's just a set of lines. Let's say this line combining with this line. It's just like a simple uh, linear regression line. This line combined with this line it will give us give us these two lines okay what if we add another line to the complexity as you can see the model will perform much better then let's add and then the model will perform out much better see like this and then let's uh, add another neuron okay it's almost perfect this is what, what we can do in only five neurons. Let's add. Okay. As you can see, we don't th I don't think that's a green uh, orange area. It's n now it's becoming overfitting. So let's go back. A bit much better. So we solve it. But sometimes you have really complex model Okay, there is a question, Mohammed Tawfiq. What TensorFlow would do different than normal library in Python? In Python, so Python by itself, it's a programming language. Uh, you can do multiplication by itself, but there is a lot of helper function in TensorFlow. This is not TensorFlow. This is just to get the idea of uh, what is neural network because we will uh, do coding in neural networks. Okay, so try by yourself to solve this problem later on. But until now, do you have any question for the neural networks? Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, so let's move on. Okay, uh, first we'll go to a website called Colab. Colab, it's a simple website. Uh, you can do whatever you want on it, and there is Python uh, installed there. I'll teach you now. If you go to File, a new notebook, it will pop up a new notebook. Okay. Then you can write Python code, for example, print uh, hello world. 
at and then you will get the seconds connecting. I just type in print hello world, then shift enter to compile. So let's let's print it hello world. But, uh, let's say we want to build a function, function called uh, my fun. Okay. And then now when when I enter uh, enter when I press enter, nothing will happen. So my function will do will take for example x and y, and then it will return uh, uh, x plus y. Same thing when I said enter when I press enter, nothing will will appear. I can do whatever I want. Then I will print my function, and then I will say. Okay. Then when I press Shift and Enter, it will combine the code. Also, I can compile it from this button just by pressing it, and it will recombine. I can use another uh, variable. So now I can use my function another time, and it will combine. As simple as that. It's very simple. Okay, let's move on. Okay, we'll start a new notebook. Okay. Let's start a new notebook. First thing, what we will do, what we will do is we'll import TensorFlow as TF, then import NumPy as MP, import another library called uh, Matplotlib. Matplotlib dot by plot as PLT. Okay, we import all these three library. Shift enter again. To compile, then we'll say tensorflow tf dot version. So we see the version of tensorflow. 2.6.0. We've got tensorflow version 2.6.0. Okay, let's move on. Second, what we will do, we will say fashion mnist. It's a data set called fashion mnist. Okay, called tf dot keras dot data sets dot fashion mnist. Okay, in fashion mnist, we'll have two kinds of data. One is the test data and the train data. Let's, let's have them both. And to, uh, in Python, you can uh, retrieve four variables at the same time, no problem. We'll say t train images. And then we'll say train tables. Okay, and the other, on the other hand, we'll say test images and then test tables. Okay, and we'll say fashion mnist. MNIST, it will, we will load the data, and voila, now it's downloading the data, yes, everything is going great, let's see what we have, so we have three images, shape, we'll see, we'll see the shape, yes, in the shape we have uh, 6,000 data points, each data point will have 28 by 28 uh, pixel size. So each image will be 28 pixel by 28 pixel. So let's print and see what we have. PLT, the figure. Okay. Then PLT dot M show. Train images. Okay. 
زيرو والكول ذا ايمج زيرو بيكوز ذس از ان اري اوكي بي ال تي دوت كلر بار سو وي كان سي ذا كلر اند ذن بي ال تي دوت شو Okay, so this is the first image, which is a shoot. And then a t-shirt. So let's define them. Okay, class name, and then we, I got online. It is a data set that's online. It's open data set just for us to learn more about machine learning and how to train models. Okay, let's say train images. Images divided by two five five point zero. Why two five five point zero? Because in each image, we'll have a gradient between a gradient between uh, zero and two five five. In each image, the pixel zero. If if the pixel got a value of a zero, it will be black, and if it's got a value of 255 it will be white but in this gray, uh, scale يعني, we'll have the uh, uh, the purple color and then we'll have the yellow color so zero is the purple uh, 255 is uh, is uh, yellow but in the neural network itself we have to normalize the data where we uh, do, do, let all the data between zero and one Okay. Yes, class name is the training label. Yes, but yes, the class name is is the training label. But it's just uh, an array, يعني. So it's six thousand. No, no. Uh, this is just an array. I will show you one thing. Let's say. Not train images, let's say train uh, labels, okay? And then we want the first label. First label is nine. So we don't know what nine is. So at the end, what we will do, we'll say class name, okay? And then we'll do it like this. Class names with S. Okay, so it will return uh, a string instead of returning a number. For example, it is anchor boot. We don't want it to return some um, random number from zero to nine. We'll have nine classes or nine uh, uh, labels. T-shirt, trouser, pullover, dress, bag, and all these nine labels. Got it, Mohamed Tawfiq? Great. Okay. Now we'll have our data. Let's build the model. It's the easiest part. Model equal tf.keras dot sequential. Because we need we need a sequential model. Okay. And we'll put inside our model. What sequential mean? It means one after each other. One layer after each other. Now we'll put the layers, let's say keras, dot layers, dot flatten. Okay, and then input shape. We'll have an input shape equal to 28 by 28. Exactly like the shape we got here. Okay, this is the first layer, and then the second layer will be tensorflow, keras, layers, dot dense. One, two, eight. And then activation will be right. Uh, the activation function, it is a function, <laughs> it is a function to normalize the layer itself. Okay, in a nutshell. 
And then the last layer, what we have exactly like the cat and the cat uh, example, we'll have zero uh, or one, zero or one. It's either uh, cat or no cat. In this case, what we'll have, we'll have 10. Because we'll have 10 from zero to nine uh, levels, okay? Uh, so at the end of the neural network, it will be, we'll have 10 neurons. Step nine. This one, Yusuf. Yes, and this, uh, okay. So here, in this image, what what is this image? It's have a pixels, and each pixel contain a color. And the color, we can see it, or the computer see it as a number. Okay, the number from zero to two, five, five. Okay, each pixel is a color, and we see it as a number. And each number, it is a gradient from zero to two, five, five. This is uh, the, if, let's see, let's, let's see. Okay, as you can see, it is a matrix uh, here because it's before processing, uh, it's just random numbers. But in, in, if we want to do it in the neural network or in, in any machine learning algorithm, and specifically neural network, we have to divide it and let all the data be between zero and one. We cannot deal with, the neural network cannot deal with numbers above than one. Did I answer your question, Yusuf? Okay, great. Okay, now this is the modeling. Enter, and nothing will happen. Why? Because we didn't do the, uh, the necessary things. Now we will do it. So after defining the model, we will compile the model. Just like any compile. We'll compile it and we'll choose something, it's called optimizer. Uh, the optimizers is the algorithm to let the neural network learn, okay? It's an algorithm to let the neural network learn. There is a lot of, okay, of kinds of algorithm, but one of the best is Adam, where it's adapt, adapt on the way. Something uh, a bit complex, but in a nutshell, it is just for learning. We see this is another algorithm, uh, RMS, root mean square prop, or root mean square, or uh, we'll have a lot of algorithms uh, for optimizing. Root mean square, if you remember in the high school, we have the root mean square, square error in that case. But now we can optimize by root mean square. And now we'll we'll call something called loss. Uh, and the loss is calculate the loss. Uh, it is the distance between the line. If we go to TensorFlow Playground, let's go TensorFlow Playground. Okay, in this case. What's the loss? The loss is the distance between each point and the line itself. This is the loss. This is the loss. Okay, we want to calculate also the loss. The last thing we will, we will uh, call metrics. The metrics uh, parameters just for what we want to see. We want to see the accuracy. Uh, some of us want to see, for example, loss, but in this case, we just want to see the accuracy. Okay, now we will compile the model and get an error, just a second. So let's call another one. Okay. Cross intro, uh, entropy. Last thing we want to fit the model. 
Uh, what is fitting the model? Uh, it is where uh, in the stage where we give the data to the model and let it learn. We call it fit. Okay. We'll have train images and train labels. Okay, and epochs equal nine or ten. Uh, the epochs uh, is each time the, the the neural network will learn. So now it will learn ten times. Everything is going well? Yes, everything is going well. You see, here is the accuracy and here is the loss. It will learn one time, two time, three time, until ten time. Uh, is it easy until now? Do you have any question? Okay. Okay. What will what will be different of box if if we increase or decrease? What is okay? Box. What will do if we decrease the box? You can try by yourself, uh, Muhammad. But now uh, it won't layer. Yeah, if we decrease the box, it won't layer. And if we increase the box, it will layer. But sometime it will layer and it will do overfitting sometime it's layers and it's too overfitting we don't want to do that yet. okay let's go what we did now okay let's evaluate the model we'll say test first and then test accuracy we will have a function called model evaluate. Okay. And we will give it test images and test tables. Because we don't want to uh, give it the same data and test it at this, the same data. So exactly, when it's like when you get in the exam and and uh, and you test uh, 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 not same question as the one you studied. So the loss is like this, and the C, the accuracy here is 0 0.9, so 90%, and the accuracy here is 88% because it's test images, not the real uh, thing. Okay. Let's make a prediction. Okay, for a prediction, we need one more thing. We need to add it. We need to add an activation on softmax. Okay, let's train. Okay. So let's see the model and finally let's predict. We'll call it predict equal predict equal model dot predict and we'll give it test images okay and let's see let's see the prediction zero okay uh, and the prediction what will do it will give us the the, the probability of 
of that number it will be from zero uh, for, from the first let's say first uh, label uh, t-shirt the probability of of uh, this image being a t-shirt is like this and so on and so forth what we can do we can call numpy argmax and then red and give it zero what we'll do we'll give it nine and then what we can do so we can go to the class name and give it this number. How to double check it? How to double check it? Now we, we will double check it by copying these. Okay. But instead of train images, we'll give it list images and then zero. And let it print for us this label and the real label. Print. And we want to print the label. Uh, test labels. And we'll give it the first one. Also, we need this thing. It's clearly an anchor boot, and then the prediction, let's say here, prediction of the model, like this, and then the real yeah, label. Okay, the real label is anchor boot, and the prediction of the model is anchor boot. So that's great. What we can do now, we can define a number, number called zero, and then change this to num, and then num. And whatever we want to change, everything will change. The image will change, and the model, uh, the, the, the prediction will change, and the label itself will change. How will we know if it's overfitting? Will the accuracy go down? No, if it's overfitting, the accuracy will be real high. The accuracy will be 100%, something like that. Or you know what? Uh, now we cannot overfit it. We can train it a lot, so it will be overfitting. Okay, if you saw Tony, how we can determine that number then? Uh, Muhammad, what do you mean uh, determine that that number then? Which number? The ebook number. Okay, the ebook number. There is a lot of way we call it. Okay, Muhammad, uh, let's yani, uh, agree on something. Uh, the optimizer, the loss, uh, the model architecture, for example, in this model we have only one dense layer. The model architecture, the, uh, the, the loss, the optimizer, and the epox, we call it hyperparameter. And then these hyperparameters, uh, without the architecture, sorry, uh, these hyperparameters, usually they test it. And we don't know how, the, there is no equation to let you know how to do it. There is no equation. But, however, uh, you can test and retrain, test and retrain until you will have your, uh, your, your correct model. Because, Muhammad, every data set is different than the other data set. For example, if this thing, if this architecture and this hyperparameter worked on this data set, that does not mean it won't, it will work on another data set. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to say it, but you said it. <laughs> uh, fine tuning. Here where we use fine tuning. There is some algorithm to do the fine tuning for you. Uh, 
but uh, we don't use it a lot. Okay, now what do you think? What, what we can do with this model? Now we build this model, what we can do with it? Deploy it, yes, we can deploy it. And uh, uh, we can deploy it easily. Yani. And then uh, whenever we give it a new image, it will give us uh, the result. Okay, let's make it a complex. Let's add something. What I will add is a layer here. Okay, and I will use the number to 60, 62 for example. And between this layer, I will add something called uh, dropout. Robot and then let's say twenty. Okay, what is the robot? It will remove. Sorry, zero point two, not twenty. The robot, it will remove 20% out of uh, the, the neurons. Why we want to remove it? To prevent overfitting. Now, we don't have any overfitting, but in the future, sometimes you will have overfitting, and this is another way to deal with overfitting. And we don't want to give it 10 epochs, this one. And then it will be exactly uh, the same. Okay. You will, uh, you will. The, the accuracy will be lower. Yes, the accuracy will be lower. But as you can see, it's lower on the training model, the training data set. But it won't be lower on the real uh, data set. That's normal. So, okay, Bickels. Uh, we can use Bickel, but. Uh, now we can just say model dot save. Okay, and we can save it in whatever we want. File path. Let's say new dot five for example. Pilot. We'll find it here. New dot h five. We download it, and this is the model. We can do it. We can save only the weights, the numbers. So. Sure. If we decide to add more code images from the internet, how can we train it and link it with the labels? Okay. Okay, uh, Yusuf, you want to add uh, new codes. What you will you do? You will import OpenCV. Yes, then you will read. Image, I am read, and then you will put here it's, what is the image you have. I don't have time now, but this is the way this is the pseudocode. Yeah. Um, let's say the image is image one dot jpg. Read it, then what you what will you do? You will uh, resize. Size it to 28 
y28 then you will say image image but um, I think there is a function uh, in OpenCV to convert uh, convert uh, RGB to uh, grayscale. Converted uh, something like that. It's uh, the uh, the code word won't work, but this is the idea to co to convert. Okay, let's say CV2, convert color, and then you'll give it the image, and then you will give it the RGB to gray, and then yeah, image equal something like that. Image equal. Okay, you convert it to grayscale, so it will be like that. And the last step is image equal. Image to point point five five. So we make it from zero to one. Last thing, you will add it to train dot uh, train images. Train images dot append, and then you will add the image. This is the step in a nutshell. So you will import the image, the one image you have, or the many images you have. You can uh, do a, lab, a loop. For it, for it, let's make a loop. For I in um, file OS. Uh, in a folder, let's say it's just a uh, In the folder, okay, and then you will load it. I you will load all the images, and then you will append them to the uh, train images that we got to them. Did I answer your question, Yusuf? Uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you very much uh, for attending the workshop. I hope you have fun, and I hope you you learn uh, a lot. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you need something, I'm on Instagram, Twitter. You can ask me anytime. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for everything you did today. I think this was uh, really comprehensive and cohesive, and straight to the point so i'm hoping everybody benefits and uh, finds this very useful um i might uh, we could have five minutes maybe answer questions i'm gonna um, make everybody yes, yes. a presenter mode and they can uh, probably um speak uh, to you if they have any questions yes um, so anybody that i add on please keep your mic muted and then only when um, nobody speaking, please ask your question or share something with Muhammad uh, if you have anything. Okay, so one more yeah. thing, I will share with you. I just share with you a link, uh, and there uh, there will be the. Uh, I, I, I take the code from there. You can you can tweak with it. You can learn with it, play with it, mm -hmm. try new things with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've given everyone um, uh, a change of status. So you should have got a presenter mode and you press yes and you'll be able to open your mic. And if you do have a question, then please do otherwise. We hope to see you in any of our other events in the future.
that's it. Uh, do you have any advice? That's one last question, let's say, Mohammed, uh, on where people can go next. What would be the best thing for them to build on what you just did? Okay, so first, uh, the best thing to do is to uh, to visit the webs uh, the link that I just gave you, uh, to tinker with the code, to play with the code, uh, see if you change, for example, the box, what will uh, what it will affect on. And this is the first thing. The second thing, you can learn more uh, on YouTube. YouTube, there is a lot of uh, good courses, free courses for machine learning. And last thing, uh, you can go to Udemy, udemy.com. It uh, has a lot of courses uh, from zero to hero yeah, in machine learning and deep learning. That sounds good. Excellent, excellent advice. Thank you for that. Welcome. All right. I don't see any questions, nothing in the chat. So I think it's good to go and call it a night. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Yeah, I think Alpha. Yeah. Excellent. I wish Allah you a lovely Allah. end of your Friday day and inshallah the weekend. Have a, have a lovely night. Uh, and inshallah. the same for everybody else. Have a lovely night, everyone. Have a lovely night. Thank you. You're Bye. welcome. Thank you. Sharaf na wujudik. الشرف لي الشرف لي الله يسلمك ان شاء الله ويخليك مع السلامه مع السلامه